Hello everyone, uh, today we are going to start the second chapter. Uh, in the last uh, class we have covered the first chapter that was about the basics of uh, uh, computer programming languages. We also discussed uh, the hardware and software components of a computer system. We discussed various uh, programming languages that we have and uh, we also discussed uh, how to uh, how can we run a simple python program so uh, as we discussed in the previous class we will be using python idle as a software for running our code in this particular class so if you are using some other uh, IDE that is also fine so I'll be using uh, python idle for this course so in this chapter we will uh, uh, do some other basic coding skills uh, related to python so you might already have uh, done those uh, in uh, uh, another course for example if you have taken a course in java so you would know all of these uh, basic skills but since uh, uh, the syntax of python is uh, slightly different uh, compared to java so we will be doing all those basic coding skills again so that you get familiar with uh, the syntax of python starting with the indentation so uh, we discussed this uh, briefly in the last lecture as well that uh, python is very sensitive to indentation by indentation we mean that uh, the extra spaces do you might want to give uh, in a code so if you give any extra spaces for example in java or in c that uh, doesn't really matter but python is very sensitive to indentation so if you want to give uh, uh, any extra spaces you have to be careful so you cannot give indentation without any reason in uh, a normal code so if you want to give indentation so you can only give indentation for the nested blocks and uh, the standard is that you actually give uh, four spaces or one tab for indentation whenever you give so last time we did discuss that a little bit so I'll just give you one example again and then uh, uh, we'll go to the next topic. So let's suppose if I have written this code. So this is one of the sample code. Now if I run this code, for example, if I run this code, it would probably work fine. So if I run this, this is the output that I'm getting. Now if I give a space here and now if I try to run, so so it is giving me that there is unexpected indent. So I have given extra space here. That space is not allowed. So I will have to remove this extra space. And when you are using some module, for example, last time we did use some module. We used, for example, if a equal equal to 1, where a is what? a is a variable that we already have declared. Now, when I declare this if block, you know when you declare a block, for example, if you have if, so you may have multiple statements which are part of f. Now how does compiler know which statements are part of f? So that is known by the compiler by using the indentation. So now if I press enter after this, so you see it automatically gives indentation. The cursor comes here. It does not move to the start of the line. So that means now the block of f has started. Similarly, when you have the for loop, while loop, all of these which have some kind of block so in that case when you use colon here and press enter it automatically gives an indentation so in this case anything that i write here for example if i write here i am inside if so it would if i compile this so you would see i am inside if that is printed so that means uh, it is working and uh, if I move this here, for example, if I move this here, it would still work. You see, it is still working. So if you have given a space, it would still work. But if you do not give any space, so for example, if I do here, it will give me error that you have uh, an unexpected and indented block. So it expects an indentation after if. So there must be a statement which is part of if. So if you write everything here, that means that uh, uh, you probably forgot the indentation. So it is giving you error. So if I give indentation, even if I give one space, 
it will work so now it is working but generally as I said the default is that you need to do what you need to actually give uh, four spaces so that is the uh, default that it uses and I will I would also recommend that when you use any block always try to use four spaces or one tab as an indentation if you use one space that would work as well two spaces that would work but in that case if you use anything else other than four spaces or a tab then all the statements which are part of that particular block must be given the same indentation so for example now if I do what if I give a space here and now I write on I am inside if I am still inside if now if I try to compile it it gives me error it says that there is unexpected indentation so that means now all the statements which are part of the block they must have the same indentation so I must move this one here so now all the statements which are part of this particular block they have the same indentation so if you give one space as indentation that means all the statement must be given one space as indentation if I give for example four spaces here and here as well now if I compile it so it would still work but if I give for example uh, the first one as a, if I give four spaces to the first one and five spaces to the next one it would give me error that this one should be properly aligned if it is part of this block if it is not part of this block then that means you can simply move it here so if I move it here that means now I am outside this block so I can write down I am outside if so now you see that both of these are working so just be careful whenever you are using indentation and as I said I recommend that uh, whenever you use indentation always try to use the default indentation which is what which is one tab or four spaces then it becomes very easy to identify which particular statements are part of which particular block so this is all about indentation okay next we have how can we divide a long statement so there are two ways to divide a long statement into two lines by long statement we mean that you have a limited window when you are writing something so that's what I'm writing here this is a long statement so it might be going outside the window so in that case uh, I will have to scroll from the bottom in order to see the rest of the line so normally what do we do we move it to the next line if the piece of code for one line is too long now if you want to divide a piece of long statement into two lines then there are two kind of uh, ways to divide the statement into two statements one is called the implicit continuation and the other one is called explicit continuation a statement in implicit continuation which is shown here on the left hand side we can divide it by using a plus sign so if you are using the implicit continuation you have to use what you have to use a plus sign to, to, to separate these now the plus sign could be used at the end of the first line or at the beginning of the next line both of these would work if you want to use the explicit continuation so then what do you have to do you have to write a slash you have to write this backslash to divide the statement into two statements so when you write plus for example here or if you do not write anything it moves to the new line and finds out if there is a plus here if there is a plus then it knows that this statement is actually connected to the previous one if there is a plus here and after that there is no statement it finds out it automatically that the next statement is actually part of this in the case of backslash whenever it sees backslash then it knows okay that there is some part of this statement which is on the next line so it combines both of these while executing now where should we use the implicit continuation and where should we use the explicit continuation implicit continuation is used only when one statement has completed and next part of the statement 
uh, you want to it to be on the next line so you could see here in this statement we have many parts so we have a string here then we have a, an integer converted to string another string which is in green in purple we have another variable converted to string and then another string in green so there are different portion of this particular block so in the case of implicit continuation you have to do what you can on the divide uh, when one particular statement has completed and the next statement you can divide it on the next line you can move it to the next line so in this example you could see that this statement str of b has completed after that we had a string so we moved the string on the next line if you are using the explicit continuation in that case you can break your line anywhere even if you have completed half of the statement next half could be on the next line so for example you could see here here we have written str for converting into string we'll study that later for converting a variable into string and the variable that we have to specify it is not specified here it actually is specified on the next line so we did not complete this instruction here some part of this instruction is actually on the next line but we can divide it if you use what if you use this backslash now let us see an example so I have written a small piece of code here I have declared two variables a which is equal to 1 b which is equal to 2 and I am printing a statement so first I have a string this is a simple test for dividing now this string is in double quotes so you could see the color is green and after that I have used plus y because now I want to print an integer here now this integer that I have here a this is what this integer is uh, uh, this is an integer and this is a string so we are combining an integer with a string using a plus sign so whenever you want to combine any variable with a string where the variable is not a string then you have to convert that into a string everything here must be a string inside the print otherwise it will give you error so if you use plus then you have to explicitly convert the variable which is non-string into a string since a is equal to 1 and it is an integer not a string so that is why I have converted a into string by using str and after that I have another string so I have combined this with the next string using plus again and after that I have used what plus and rest of the code is on the next line so since I used plus to divide it so this is called what this is called implicit continuation and I can use plus either here or here both of these would work so that uh, let me try to compile it as you see it has compiled this is a simple task for dividing one line into two lines so what happened it printed this this is a simple task for dividing and after that it converted a into string what was the value of a one so that is why it printed one here before one there is a space and after one there is a space as well how do you get space you see there is a space here and there is a space here remember if you have to give space if you want to see a space in the output then in that case you have to give space inside double quotes or inside a string otherwise you will not see space in the output so if I keep on giving for example spaces here these spaces do not matter because these spaces are not part of a string but if I give a space here if I remove the space from here then in that case you will see that uh, there will be no space before the one so you see now this one is combined with dividing so there is no space so I have to give a space here. so this is called what this is called implicit continuation now for explicit continuation what can we do we can divide from anywhere so let's suppose this is a string if I divide this thing into the middle from the middle so now what has happened now some part of this string is here and some part of string is here now in this case let me try to see whether it works or it does not work so if I compile it you see it gives me error so it says end of line while scanning string literal literal so it was scanning this string here but uh, 
while for there is a start of a string there was no end of a string on this line and there is no deviation as well so that is why it is giving you error now even if i write plus a it would still give me error because that plus is still part of the string so that means you cannot divide this line by using plus if you are dividing in from the middle of a string or from middle of a command so in that case what do i have to do i have to use the backslash that is explicit uh, continuation now you could see when i do not use plus or even if i use plus in both the cases this particular uh, this particular word that you have written the color of this one is black so that means it is not part of a string so before writing plus it was not a part of string it is black after writing plus it is still not part of a string but when i write this backslash now you see this turned into green so that means now this has become part of this line the string starts here and ends here that is why it turned into green now if i run this one so you see that it is running now only that there is extra space here this is a simple task for dividing one line into two lines and there is space here for the space space is basically coming because we have space here so if i can move this one here so then you would see that the space would not be there so now the space has been removed in fact there is a space here so even if i do not give space it would still work so it is working so this is how you can divide a long statement into small statements by using the uh, either the implicit continuation or the explicit continuation okay the next topic do have, we have is uh, comments uh, comments are part of every programming language and you might have used those uh, in java as well in java there were two different kind of uh, comments that you could uh, do one was the multi line comments that was using uh, forward slash and star and the other was a single line comment which was using two forward slashes in python the comments always start with the hash sign so this is the hash sign so anything after the hash sign those are ignored by the python because that is considered part of the comment so for example we have few examples of comments here so we have block comments we have in line comments as well so what do we do uh, for why do we use block comments or in line comments so the block comments they are normally used when you are defining a whole section of code so for example we have a block comment here which is defining the whole file so this is telling us this is a tutorial program that illustrates the use of the while and if statements in python this is a single line comment that is hash so that means only one line would be commented if you use hash if the next line you also want to be part of comment so you have to use hash again so this is called a block comment this is explaining what this whole file contains next we have another block comment it says initialize variables so this particular block is actually used for initializing the variables this block is used for getting scores and then this block is used for calculating the average calculating the average score and then you see these are actually the sum of the statements which are commented out as well so if you write hash before a statement that statement then will not be part of the code so why do we use comments so we either use comments to be describe part of a code or uh, uh, describe the whole file or these are also used to disable statements as well so whenever you are using whenever you are doing dub debugging so sometime there may be error in your code and you may want to find out where the error is and you are not sure so what you can do if there is any line that you probably feel there is a problem in this line so just comment it out and see whether the program works if the program works without that line then that means there may be an issue with that line of course that is not the case uh, uh, every time because one statement might be uh, dependent on another lot of other statements but these can be used uh, for simple programs for commenting out statements that you either do not need or uh, you may want to 
just disable them and, and test whether the program works without that particular statement. So these are block comments. We may have the inline comments as well. The inline comments are those comments which are written after a piece of line. So you have a piece of code here, one line code. And after this one line, we have written one comment. So these inline comments are just used for explaining one particular line. So for example, this one is telling us that this line is doing what? Adding score to the total. And this line is doing what? Adding one to the counter. So this is a, uh, uh, so these are, an, these are examples of comments. So comments are started with hash used for explaining portions of program used for uh, commenting some of the statements that you may not be interested or you just want to disable for the moment and we have either block comments which explain a portion of the code or we may have inline comments which explain one single line code so i'll give you example and uh, just for you to see how it works so for example i'll give you one example here so this is a block comment this program is used for testing so you could see the comments are uh, the comments have a color, red color so whenever you see red color inside the code that means this particular line is commented out so sometime by mistake if you comment something so you would know by just looking at the color that if it is red then that means it is what it is coming commented out so this is a block comment I can give inline comment for example I can write a comment this is declaration of variable a declaration and assignment of variable a so now if I compile this these two although they are part of this program but they these are not compiled by the python compiler because these are commented out so comments would be there in the file but they will not be compiled whenever you compile your program okay the next topic we have is functions you may already have studied functions in another programming language uh, in most of the programming language the word function is used for for the functions but uh, in java if you have studied java java does not use the name function java uses a name method and method is same as a function so so if you have studied methods in java methods in java are same as functions in any other language so what is a function it is a group of statements which perform a specific task so there are a lot of built-in functions in python which perform a specific task and you can use those functions and we have been using those functions similarly we can define our own functions as well so when you have a function what does a function look like you have a function name first and then you have some arguments for the function inside these parentheses so this is a general function syntax where function name it represents the name of any function and argument represent inputs so we may have one input we may have multiple inputs in a function as well so if you have more than one argument that means you have more than one inputs inside the function then those inputs must be separated by comma when you are defining the function when you are using it then uh, uh, depending on what kind of function it is if you have defined a function separated by comma so then of course when you use it you will separate it by comma we have been using some built built-in functions for example we have used print function so here print is what it is the name of function and then we have these parentheses here and inside parentheses we have our argument so here hello is what hello is an argument now print accepts only string input so that is why we have to specify string inputs if you do not specify an input then in that case if you compile it it will still execute depending on how your function has been designed for example this print function can take one input or it can take uh, multiple inputs as well if they are converted properly into strings 
so this is one of the function that we have and then similarly we have a lot of other built-in functions that we have uh, inside uh, python and we'll be using all of those functions as we go through the course and later on in another lecture we will also study how can we define our own function it is important to uh, understand how do how does uh, how do these functions work because later on in another chapter we will be working on defining our own functions and using those functions for performing different kind of tasks at the moment when we write our code we will be using only the built in functions and we will be writing our code uh, without the use of any functions that we define but later on uh, the same code that we are doing now we will be redoing all of these codes by using our own functions by dividing the code into smaller parts and uh, by dividing our code into smaller functions okay, the next uh, topic that we have is data types and variables now you already have seen that when we define a variable in python we do not need to declare the data type like we used to do for other programming languages for example in java when we declare a variable so you have to type int a or double b so you have to tell the compiler what kind of data type this particular variable has but when you use python in python you do not need to tell the compiler what is the data type of the variable for example if you see here the examples we were just doing i define two variable a equal to 1 b is equal to 2 both of these are integer variables but i did not define whether it is integer or double python automatically finds out that since i am putting integer value inside this it must be integer data type and since i am putting 2 inside b then that means b must have also have the integer data type and similarly if i put an, an, uh, any other values for example fraction values then in that case python would automatically know that i am putting fraction values inside a variable so that means this is what this is a double or floating variable so three power types there are data types in uh, in uh, python the string data type the name is string and it is used at str integer data type used at int floating point data type used as float so this is the word that we use uh, in python what is a string a string is uh, a collection of symbols a collection of characters for example a name is a string even a digit if you put if you put it in quotes that will also be a string and this is also a string with multiple words now to define the string in python you can either use double quotes or you can use single quotes both of these are allowed if you decide to use double quotes so just make sure when you start with double quote you must end with the double quotes and if you start with single quote then you must end with a single quote but it is your choice whether you want to use a single quote or double quote and it is always good to be consistent if you use double quotes then it is better to use double quotes throughout but uh, uh, it is not uh, compulsory if you want to use both of these uh, interchangeably so you can use whenever you want to use double quotes use double quotes whenever you want to use single quotes you can use single quotes okay int which is type of integer so these are few examples of integers so python has sign integers so that means these can take positive values and can also take negative values then you have the float which is takes floating point or fraction values and again it can take uh, all the real numbers whether positive or negative now as i said when you define a variable you don't have to declare the data type so why do we need it then now sometimes we may need it if we have a data which is in one form and we want to convert into another form for example we defined 40 here now this 40 is what it is considered as string although 40 is also an integer but since it is in double quotes so that means it is in string so if it is saved into a variable that variable will be a string variable now if i want to convert it into integer so then i can do what i can convert this into integer by using int by using int and if i before after the int in brackets I specify the name of the variable 
and save it in another variable that variable will be converted into integer and then it will be saved into the new variable so this could be used uh, if you want to convert between the uh, between the data types but of course it uh, can only be used when it is possible for example you cannot convert mic into integer because this is not an integer it is only possible when you have an integer inside a string then it could be converted the other way it is always always possible for example if you want to convert integer into string so you just need to put double quotes or you just need to use str and all the integers or floats they could be converted into strings but the other way is not possible not all the strings could be converted into integers or floats okay few examples of variables first name that is mike so this is a string variable quantity 1 this is integer quantity 2 to 5 this is also integer list price is equal to 19.99 now this is what this is a, a floating point variable okay so we already have seen the data types and then what about the variables so the variables um, there are few rules uh, in every programming language for naming the variables so before I go into the variable rules uh, one recommendation would be whenever you use the variables uh, for solving any practical problem then always try to use the variable name which reflects what it is going to store for example if I see here I can see this is first name so this is this variable must be storing first name of somebody quantity one that I mean that this is some kind of quantity list price that means it is price of something now you can use a b c or x y z as variable as well like i have done here for example i have used a equal to 1 and b equal to 2 so we can use that as well but that doesn't really tell what this variable is supposed to hold what kind of variable it is so since i was just testing so that is why i have used this but when you do it practically so always uh, try to make sure that you use the variable name which reflect what it is going to store so what are rules for the variables in python a variable can only begin with a letter or underscore it cannot begin with a number or anything else it can contain it cannot contain spaces now this is one of the uh, one thing that is really import, important and a lot of students have been making this mistake uh, that when you declare a variable name you cannot have a space in variable name for example if you write on first name and if you give a space between first and name then that means these could be actually probably two variables so you, you can't give a space so if you have a variable which have multiple uh, words so you can separate those using underscore or using you know this notation but do not try to give a space in a variable it will give you error so it cannot contain spaces it cannot contain punctuation marks or special characters except underscore so only the underscore could be used in a variable name it cannot start with a number but can use number later later on in the name so for example we have used quantity one so this is okay i cannot use one quantity if i use the uh, digit at the start that will give me error so it can start it cannot start with a digit but can use a digit later on in the name and then it cannot be same as keyword defined by python so there are some built-in words uh, in python which are used for specific purposes so we can't uh, use those uh, uh, as python variable now how do you know whether a particular name is a python uh, built-in variable built-in uh, keyword so whenever you write uh, any word for example if i write on max so you see the color of this one has changed into purple so anything that is purple that means it is probably a uh, built-in keyword if i write str you see it is purple if i write int it is purple but for example if i write max one so you see it has turned into black so that means this could be used as a variable it is not some keyword defined by the python python does not use it for some other purpose okay what are the conventions if you have a variable which uses more than one word so as I said you cannot give a space if you have more than one word there are two kind of notations 
underscore notation and camel case notation in under course notation under underscore notation what do you do you separate the words by using underscores here we have two words so i have separated both by using underscore if you have more than two words then of course you can separate all those by using underscore as well in camel case notation what does happen you write down the first word in lower case and the first letter of the second word that is converted into upper case so this is called what this is called camel case notation so this also can be used uh, you know for easily identifying the variable name if you do not give a space that would still work but in that case for the user it becomes really difficult to actually understand what this particular word is if you combine both the words so you should uh, uh, separate the words either using the camel case notation or you can use the underscore notation so it is your choice whatever you want to do but it is a convention so it is not something that is required to do if you don't want to use it it would still work but it is recommended and it becomes easier for yourself and for other person to actually read your code so always use this convention okay see these are some of the keywords of python and as assert break loss and then there are many more so you don't have to remember all of these as i said when you write any keyword it is always converted into purple so if it is converted into purple then in that case you know it is a keyword so you should not use it as a variable name and if it is in black color that means it is not a keyword and you can use it as a uh, variable in your program the sum of the arithmetic operators that we have in python the addition operator plus it is used to add two operands minus subtraction it is used to subtract the right operand from the left multiplication it multiplies the two operands so steric is used uh, for multiplication division this is the forward slash it divides the Uh, right operand uh, into the left operand the result is always a floating point number so in this case the result will always be a floating point number whether it is uh, the whether if you are dividing two numbers whether they these numbers are integers or uh, these are not integers the result will always be a floating point value so we have few examples here for example 5 plus 4 that gives 9 25 divided by 4 that gives 6.25 so this particular value is divided by this one the one on the uh, right hand side that is divided by the sorry the uh, on the left hand side that is divided by the right hand side and you, this is what you get now there is a special division operator in python that we normally have do not have in other languages that is called integer division So what is this integer division? It does not use one forward slash. It uses two forward slashes. So when you have two forward slashes and you are dividing uh, a number, then in that case the result is always an integer. The fractional part is always removed. So whatever that fractional part may be, that is removed and you only get the integral part as a result. So this is useful when you want to get only the integer part and you are not interested in the fractional part. Okay, another one modulo operator. This is a very important operator, uh, which is used in uh, uh, in a lot of applications. The modulo operator finds out the remainder. It is also called the remainder operator. It divides the one on the left hand side with the the, the with the value on the right hand side, and after division, whatever is the remainder, the remainder is returned. So, for example, you had twenty five remainder four. So we know four into six is twenty four. Twenty five cannot be divided by four. So four into six is twenty four. What is the remainder? That is one. So it gives us the remainder. That is one. Then this particular operator that is two stars. This is used for exponential. So it is used to take the power of the left hand value. So for example, if you want to take three square. so that will give you 3 square it takes the power so in this case if you want to take 3 cube so you write 3 double star and cube it will take 3 cube 
and similarly you can take any other power so that I'll just try to see I can directly compile all of this directly into the Python shell 5 plus 2 it gives me 7 so 25 divided by uh, 4 it gives me 6.25 and 25 double slash by 4 it gives me only 6 if I write down 27 divided by 4 it would still okay 27 divided by 4 that gives me 6.75 if I write double slash here and 4 you see it still gives me 6 so it does not round the value to the nearest integer it always removes the fractional part and gives you the integral part so that means it moves it actually to the uh, lowest integer value so if there is fractional part that would be simply removed and then we have the remainder operator for example if you have 30 remainder 4 so we know 30 cannot be divided by 4 30 remainder 4 would be 4 into 7 is 28 so what would be the remainder remainder would be 2 if I write 31 remainder 4 so that will give me what 3 and if I write 32 remainder 4 32 can be divided by 4 4 into 8 that is 32 so the remainder would be what in this case the remainder would be 0 and for power operator so you can simply use uh, double star so I can use double star and 2 here that gives me 3 square that is 9 and I can also use for example 5 square so that gives me 25 I can use 5 cube as well that should give me 125 and it gives me 125 so this could be used the double star could be used to actually get the power of a number okay how do we apply the arithmetic operators if there are multiple arithmetic operators in one statement now in that case when you have multiple arithmetic operators then uh, you have to see this uh, uh, order of precedence so for example this exponent operator that has the highest precedence so if there are multiple operations in one single line this one will always be performed first then multiplication division integer division and modulo operator these have the same precedence so that means you can apply any one of these uh, first but what do we do when we have multiple of these operations we always go from left to right so for example if we have these in this particular order so then I will first perform the multiplication dvn then integer dvn and then the remainder but let's suppose if remainder was on the left hand side so then I will perform the remainder first so whichever out of these is on the left hand side that is performed first we go from left to right because none of these has uh, uh, higher precedence they all of these actually have the same precedence now for plus minus uh, this also goes from uh, left to right this also goes from left to right because both of these have the same precedence level so for example if you have this uh, operation here 3 plus 4 into 5 since multiplication has higher uh, precedence as compared to addition so 4 into 5 that will give you 20 20 plus 3 that will give you 23 so this will be the result multiplication would be performed first but if you want to perform addition first if you just write this way in that case multiplication will always be performed first but if you write this in parenthesis that anything inside parenthesis that is always performed first then the press order of precedence is not followed because press the parenthesis have the highest precedence so if you have parenthesis anywhere any particular operation within the parenthesis that will always be evaluated first so if you do not remember these precedents so it is always good to actually write what write your operations uh, in parenthesis so that the operation you want to perform first these are always performed first okay after this we have the compound uh, assignment operators so what are the compound assignment operators sometimes we may have a situation where we want to apply an operation on a variable and want to save the result back into the same variable in that case 
what you can do you can apply compound assignment operator so how can you apply compound assignment operator so this is how you can apply so for example we can apply the compound assignment operator on addition subtraction multiplication or any operation that we have division uh, and uh, rem remainder operator all of these can be used in compound assignment so how do you use it you use plus equal to for uh, addition compound assignment we use uh, minus equal to for subtraction compound assignment and uh, overall these are called what all of these these are called compound assignment operators so how do these work for example we if we have this variable counter which is equal to zero so if i want to add one to counter so i can write down counter is equal to counter plus one that means I will add 1 to counter. What is the value of counter 0? So 0 plus 1 then it will become what? 1. And I will save back it to counter. So now the counter would become 1. Now I can write this statement this way as well. So in this case you see I am applying operation on the counter and saving the result back into the counter. So only in this situation where you apply operation on a variable and save the result back to the same variable you can use what compound assignment operators so for example if I write counter plus equal to 1 this is same as counter is equal to counter plus 1 so that means what will happen it is equal to counter is equal to counter plus 1 what is the value of counter counter had become 1 in the previous statement so now it will be 1 plus 1 2 and what will be saved into counter counter would become 2 so if you for example want to add 1 to the counter so you can either use this or you can use this is a more compact way of doing it so since this is used a lot by professional programmers so it is important for you to know about it and also uh, it is important for you to understand how it works if i write counter multiply equal to 4 this is same as counter is equal to counter multiplied by 4 so what is the value of counter counter had become 2 so that would mean counter is equal to counter multiplied by 4 now counter was 2, 2 into 4, 8. So 8 would be stored into counter. When I write counter minus equal to 2, so it will be counter is equal to counter minus 2. Counter was 8, 8 minus 2, you will get what? You will get 6 in the counter. Let us try to do it. So I'll directly do it in the Python shell because these are simple commands. So for example, I can do counter is equal to counter is equal to zero so now counter is uh, okay so you have mistake here counter is equal to zero so counter is zero to start with i can write down counter just to check what is the value in counter so counter is zero so i can do counter for example multiply equal to five so what will happen in this case counter would be equal to what counter would be equal to counter is equal to counter multiplied by 5 what is the value in counter 0 0 multiplied by 5 counter would still be 0 so if I write on counter here again it is still 0 if I write on counter plus equal to 5 so this means counter is equal to counter plus 5 what is the previous value of counter 0 0 plus 5 the new value of counter would be 5 so now if I write on counter multiply equal to 5 so that would mean counter is equal to counter multiplied by 5 so what was the previous value of counter 5 5 so 5 into 5 now you will have what 25 the new value of counter would be what 25 so although it is not compulsory to use the compound assignment operators but since these are used a lot so you need to understand how do these works and you will have a lot of these kind of uh, small statements in your assignments and uh, quizzes and probably in the final exam as well if uh, the exam is based on multiple choice questions okay next we have the string variables the string variables can be created either using the single quotes or using the double quotes it is your choice to use single quotes or double quotes but as I said previously, if you start a string with single quote, end it with a single quote. If you start a string with double quote, end a string with double quotes. 
strings can be concatenated using the plus sign if all the variables that you are concatenating these are string so if you have two uh, variables which are string you can combine those by using what by uh, by using plus if all of these are strings if these are not string then in that case it will not work so let us see a few examples so i can actually write the code here so suppose i write on first name is equal to bob so i have declared this string in double quotes now i can declare the second one in single quotes as well and you will see it will still work so for this one i have used single quotes and it is still working and then i can combine these first name plus second name so this will combine both of these now since there is no space here so it will simply combine both the both of these without any space so i can print it to see what is the result so it prints bob smith without any space now if i want a space then what do i need to do there are two ways i can give space either i can give space after this bob or i can give a space here before smith in that case there will be a space between the two now another way could be if there is no space here i can add a space here as well using string concatenation so for example i want a space so i can add another string here with the space so this is the first name then i have a simple string which is just a space and then i have the second name so then i can compile this and you see we get a space here again now you can combine these using only using uh, if you have strings only if you do not have a string then you cannot combine that using plus for example there is an example given here age is equal to 40 and then it says name plus is you can combine these name is a string is is a string plus age plus this is a string years old now in this case if you try to compile it it will give you error why because age is not a string so this is string that is fine this one is also string that is fine and this one is also string that is fine but this one is integer so you cannot combine string uh, uh, strings with an integer so let us try to do it and try to see how it works whether it works or not so age is equal to 40 and i am want to print what print name plus is so i have given space here because after the name i want to give a space so that is why before is I have given a space after is I'll give space as well plus h plus years old now if I try to compile this so name is string is a string age is not string years old is string so it should give me error so it gives me error what kind of error type error can only concatenate string not integers to string so that means we probably have what we have some kind of integer that we are trying to concatenate with string and that is true age is what age is actually not a string so what we can do we can write here str age so we can use this data type str to convert age into string so age would still be 40 here but here just for concatenation purpose this would be converted into string and then it will be combined with all other strings so now if i compile it you see it is printed bob smith is 40 years old so this is how you can combine the strings now as i said initially that you can use uh, you can use the single quotes or double quotes for writing strings so when you write single quotes or double quotes 
Uh, if you write single quote for starting a string, you must end, end it with the single quotes as well. And in between these single quotes, if you have double quote, that would be fine. That would be considered part of a string. So if you want to print double quotes in the output, then you can enclose those double quote inside single quotes. And if you want to print a single quote in the output, in that case, what should you do? You should, uh, uh, you should, uh, you should print uh, those uh, single quote inside double quotes. Let us try to see example. Suppose I want to print this is a quote. So if I print this one, what will happen? It is printing this is a quote, but the double quotes are not printed. If I want these double quotes to be printed in the output, so what can I do? I can write single quote here and I can write single quote here. So that means what is happening here? My string is starting with single quote, not with double quote. So when I write single quote here, that means uh, uh, this is uh, start of a string and then this double quote, this is just part of a string. This is not starting another string. So our string has already started with this single quote. So that means this is part of a string, it will be printed in the output. Then this double quote is also part of string, it will be printed in the output. And this single quote ends the string. Now of course I cannot write single quote first and then the double quote. But because in that case this double quote uh, might be outside the, um, it might be outside the string. So what I need to do is, I can write single quote here. And after that I can simply compile it. So you see the double quotes are printed in the output. Now the same way single quotes could also be printed. So for example, now suppose I want to print single quotes in the output. So if I want to print single quote in the output, you should start your string with double quote and end with double quote. So for example, I may write here, this is Bob's second class, second lecture. So now I want this single quote to be print, presented in the output. So that means uh, I can start with double quote and with double quote. So you could see that single quote is printed in the output. Now if instead of starting with double quote, if I start with single quote, then what will happen? It's, it assumes this is start of a string and this is end of a string. And now this one is not part of a string. So this they will give you error. It will not work. So that is why what you have to do. If you want single quote in the output, then you can do what? You can start with the double quotes. Okay, next we have a few escape sequences. The escape sequences are some special kind of sequences which are used to do some uh, special tasks in programming. So for example, we have uh, the slash n which is used for new line. So if you use this in a code, then anything after this, it moves to the new line. Then you have slash t, which is the tab. So it gives four spaces. Tab is actually four spaces. You have the slash r, which is called carriage return. Now this one is used in some operating systems for uh, either moving to the start of the line or for uh, uh, in some operating system, it is actually used for moving to the new line as well. For us, if you are using Windows slash n would work, so we will be using this for moving to the new line. Then double quotes here, slash double quotes, this is used for printing double quotes. So one technique for printing double quotes I have just uh, given you that uh, you can print double quotes if you start your string in single quotes. Or another technique would be that if you write just before double quote slash, then that would mean this double quote needs to be printed. It is not part of a string. It is not start of a string, it is part of a string. Similarly to print single quote, you can write, you know, just this uh, backslash before that and that will also work. And you can write two backslashes for printing the backslash. Because if you write one single backslash, then the compiler is expecting something after this, either n, t, r, double quote or single quote. But if you want to print the uh, backslash as it is, because if you write this backslash n, then the backslash is not printed neither n is printed. The command is executed. But if you want backslash to be printed, then what you can do is you can write two backslashes. 
If you just write one backslash to be printed, it will not work. If you write one backslash, the compiler is expecting something after the backslash. So it will simply give you error. So let us try all of these. So for example, if I want to write slash n, so if I write slash n here, slash n here, so anything after slash n that moves to the new line. So for example, after slash n we have second lecture. So when I compile it, you see this is Bob's and second lecture moves to the new line. Then if I write on t instead of slash n, if I write on t, then t gives a tab or four spaces. So this could be used for giving extra spaces. So if I write it, so you see that you have some extra spaces here. After Bob's, you have four spaces here. Then if I write on, um, for example, if I want to print double quotes, so I can print uh, double quotes. If I write without double quotes, so without slash, if I write double quotes, you see string starts here and ends here. So it will give you error. But if I print double quotes, I can simply write slash double quote. So in that case, it will treat this is start of a string. This single quote is part of string. This double quote because there is a slash uh, backslash before that. So that means this needs to be printed as it is. And this double quote, this is the end of a string which started here. Now if I compile this, you see that double quotes are printed here. Same way single quote could also be printed. For example, I can, this single quote is already printed. But I can print, in this case I can print single quote again because uh, the, the, the because uh, I have started with double quote so I can print the single quote you see that after Bob's there is a single quote printed but suppose if the string had started with single quote and ended with single quote then in that case you cannot use the single quote so if I want to use the single quote where I started the string with single quote and want to end it with single quote then to print this one as it is in the output as part of a string I must write slash before that. Now if I write slash before that then that means it needs to be printed as it is. So you could see now it prints as it is. This is Bob's second lecture. And then in order to print uh, the, the if you want to print backslash so for that you can do you can write two backslash. If I just write single backslash then what will happen? So, let me check, so, yeah, in this case I think it is working uh, for this version, but generally to print the backslashes, uh, you have to write two, two, two backslashes, so I think in this compiler probably it assumes that if there is a single backslash then it needs to be printed as it is, so that is why it is printing as it is. But generally for most of the programming languages, if you just write one backslash, then the compiler waits for it that after this, there must be either N or R or T, depending on whatever you are trying to do. But this particular compiler it is doing single slash as well. So yeah, you can use this as well directly. Okay, the next is if you have string and numbers both in print. Now if you have both string and numbers in print then how do we deal with it? Now we already have seen one example previously that we can deal with it using what? Using uh, by converting the number into string. So for example we saw this that if you want to print this particular statement Okay, so in this case age is 40 if I remove this str then it will give me error it will say that you are trying to concatenate string with integer so what do I do if I convert this age into str and if I compile it then in that case you see it works now this is one way to do it now there is another way that is actually better and that is the way you should use mostly uh, in that way you don't have to convert any variable into string so for example we may have a variable which may be integer which may be float 
and we are using in print so you always have to be careful that you have to convert that before uh, being uh, printed before printing that particular variable now you don't have to worry about conversion if you use what if instead of using plus you use comma so for example if i use bob is after that i use comma and then i use age and then i use comma here again so in this case i am using this string then i have this uh, integer and then i have another string here and i am combining the integer with strings but i do not use plus i use comma so when you use comma in that case compiler automatically converts this particular variable or any variable that you have which is not string it is automatically converted into string and then printed so that way you don't have to worry about conversion into string so for example if i remove this you already have seen it does not work it gives you error but if i do this that if i separate the age with comma so then if i compile it so you see that it works bob is 40 years old it works and uh, you actually don't have to give any space and also you don't have to give any space here as well within the single within the brackets uh, within the string because uh, this particular variable if you use commas then it automatically gives space before this and also automatically gives a space after this so you don't have to worry about giving extra spaces as well well the next topic is uh, name arguments uh, there are two popular name arguments called uh, sep and end the sep is used for separation scp and end is used for ending something now it is both of these are used inside print sep is used inside print to separate the argument with specified separator so for example i can write on print 1 2 3 4 so it will simply print 1 2 3 4 if i want to separate these 1 2 3 4 with a certain uh, character so then in that case i can write on scp equal to in quotes i can write on the character that i want to use to separate for example in this example when you use this it will print one and the separator this separator will be used to separate all the values and then similarly if you print the strings and you want to separate them you can separate those as well using the separator so let us see example so i can directly do it in the python shell because this is a simple command so i can write down print 1 2 3 4 and i can write down separator is what separator is suppose uh, you can use any separator so for example if i want to separate those uh, uh, with the uh, suppose with the uh, with percentage sign so you see these are printed and these are printed with a separator sign now if i do not use uh, the separator sign if i just use this so then it just prints 1 2 3 and 4 without any separator and then similarly i can use any other separator if i want to so any character that you have could be used as a separator so i can use any separator so for example if i want to use question mark so i can use question mark for separator so you see that it is these are separated by question mark i had given one extra space here so that space is actually shown there Okay, another name argument uh, which is very popular is end. Now this name argument end is used to end a print statement with specified character. So for example, if I write down print hello, and I want to end the hello with this particular uh, character, so then in that case, it will end it with hello uh, with this uh, sign of exclamation. So if I write down print hello. and if i write on end is equal to any character i want to use i can use so you see after hello this is printed now by default a print always have end which is slash n 
so that means if you do not write end by default end is always slash n that means a print statement always end with slash n now what does that mean that means that if you print something then after printing it always goes to the new line the next print statement always prints on the new line so that actually means that after printing something you are moving to the new new line so this means and is with slash n otherwise it will not move to the new line for example we have an example here just to see this effect it says write a program which points which prints your full name on one line using two print statements the first print statement should print your first name and second print statement should print your surname so the first statement would be printing the first name the second print statement would be printing the surname but it wants that the name should be printed in one line not on two lines so let us try to do it using code so for example if i write down print bob and then i write down smith now if i compile this you see bob smith is printed smith is printed on new line so what does that mean after printing this the cursor actually moves to the new line so this is actually same as if this ended with what slash n slash n you know moves this text to the new line so that means after printing this this print statement actually ended with slash n so that is why it actually went to the the smith is printed on the new line so you see here it actually is same as the previous one so this is actually the default that if you do not write and and is always equal to slash n. now what do we want to do we want to print this and we do not want after printing to move to the new line so in that case we will ha have to explicitly define and tell the compiler that we want an and which is not slash n we want something else so if you don't want to move to a new line after bob what do you want you just want a space and then the next print statement would should print on the same line so let us try to see now so now you see it prints on the same line why because after printing bob the print statement does what it ends it with what with a space so after bob there is just a space and then the cursor waits there now if you print anything that will be printed after the space you have ended this bob with so that is how you can do what you can actually use the named arguments okay uh, so this is it for today's lecture so uh, we have studied some of the basic uh, programming skills related to python in this lecture so what i want you to do is i want you to practice all of these uh, statements that we have uh, gone through today on your own and uh, uh, next time we'll do a little bit more uh, we will do some more uh, some simple statements so we'll do how to get input from the user uh, using input command and then how can we apply some simple operations or solve some simple problems using uh, the built-in input command um, so far when we were declaring variables so we were just giving the values values to variables inside the program but how can we get the value from the user that we are going to study using the input command uh, in the next lecture so i hope everything is clear uh, from this lecture if you have any questions uh, please uh, practice all of these and let me know during the question question on answer session if you have any questions thank you very much